Hello friends, welcome to tutorial in English literature. In the last lesson, I discussed all the major characters of Mary Shelley's literary classic Frankenstein. Today, I will explain the narrative structure of Frankenstein. It will help you to understand the overall structure of the novel and the way story progresses. But before I begin, I want to ask you a question. The question is, what is the subtitle of the novel Frankenstein? Your options are The Curse of Science, The Modern Prometheus, A Gothic Tale, The Monster. I will tell you the answer at the end of the lesson. Let's begin our discussion. The narrative structure of Frankenstein is complex as Mary Shelley has used a technique called embedded narrative or frame narrative. It is also called Russian doll effect or Chinese box structure. In an embedded narrative or frame narrative, the main story is told within a framing narrative. It is a story within a story. Just imagine a box placed within a bigger box. There are many early examples of frame narrative. Chaucer has used it in Canterbury Tales. S.T. Coldridge has employed it in the rhyme of Ends in Memory. Frankenstein has intricate structure as it contains a number of framing devices which are stories within stories that surround other stories. Frankenstein has a more intricate structure as it contains a number of framing devices which are stories that surround other stories. At the beginning of the novel there are four letters written by Captain Robert Walton. He writes these letters to his sister, Margaret Savine in England over nine months. Walton tells his sister about his struggle to discover unknown mysteries of the Arctic and about his meeting with Victor Frankenstein, who secludes himself to pursue the scientific research that will prove his undoing. These letters frame the story that Victor Frankenstein tell to these letters frame the story that Victor Frankenstein tells to Walton over one week. This story within a story contains yet another story. The story that Victor's lonely creature tells Victor in just one day, covering the first two years of his life. At the very heart of the text is located this tale of the creature. At the very heart of the text is located this tale of the creature, in which the creature recounts all that has happened to him since his birth, his efforts to be good, and the trials he has undergone. Moreover, within this story lies the story about the delays. The Turkish Christian family of pigeons whom the creature observed for a long time. He narrates the tale of the D. Lacy family to Victor, who in turn relates it to Walter. The narrative then returns to Victor until the final chapter when Walter again takes control of the narration and we return to the frame narrative for the conclusion of the story. So each of the stories is framed by another one. Thus, the narration begins with the four letters of Walton, shifts to Victor's tale in the first chapter and continues to chapter 10, then to the creature's narration, which makes chapter 11 to chapter 16. It switches back to Victor again, which begins at chapter 17 and continues to chapter 24 and end with the records of Walton in chapter 24 and in the final letter or in the epilogue. The complex structure is often likened to a Russian nesting dolls which is a set of wooden dolls of decreasing size placed one another inside This complex structure is often likened to 
Russian nesting dolls, which is a set of wooden dolls of decreasing size placed one inside another, as you can see in this picture. The largest doll of the narrative is Robert Walton. Inside it rests the narrative of or the largest doll is the narrative of Captain Robert Walton. Inside of it rests the narrative of Victor Frankenstein. Inside of Victor's doll rests the smaller doll, the narrative of Victor's creature. The creature's tragic tale contains the smallest doll in the set, the story of the Lacy family. In this chart, you can see clearly there are at least five audiences with four levels of narration in the structure. In this chart, you can see clearly there are at least five audiences with four levels of narration in the structure. The first narrator is Captain Walton and his sister is the first audience as she reads the letters first. We readers become the second audience when we go through the book. In the same way, when Victor begins it, in the same way, when Victor begins his narration, Walton first listens the story and narrates to his sister in the form of letter. His sister becomes the second audience as we, the readers, turn into the third audience as we progress through the narrative. And this goes on as we can see in the chart. To summarize our discussion, we can say that in the core of the novel, the creature's story is presented to us framed by Victor's narration, which is itself in framed by Robert Watts Walton's epistolary narrative, which is which itself is inframed by Robert Walton's epistolary narrative. The overall structure of the novel is symmetrical. It begins with the letters of Walton, shifts to Victor's tale, then to the creature's narration, so as to switch to Victor's narrative again and end with the records of Walton. In this manner, the reader gets different version of the same story from different perspective, from different points of view. The intention of each narrative is to create some effect on the narrator. The narrative of monster attempts to convince his creator, Victor, to take his responsibility. The intention of each narrative is to create some effect on the narration. The narrative of monster attempts to convince his creator Victor to take his responsibility as parent and to make a mate, a companion for him. Victor's narrative tries to pursue Walton to end his journey and to destroy the monster. Now let's go back to the question. The correct answer is option 2. Now let's go back to the question. The correct answer is the modern Prometheus. This is the subtitle of Frankenstein. In Greek mythology, Prometheus stole fire from the gods and gave it to humanity. He was subsequently bound and punished eternally for his crimes. Similarly, Frankenstein discovered how to give life to things and is subsequently punished by the endless tragedy delivered unto him by his creation. But unlike fire, his gift to humanity, that is the knowledge of the secret of life, remains a secret. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.